Lights, camera, action. Welcome to Aussie's podcast, everyone. My name is Vaibhav Patel, and we have the special guest today with us, none other than Mr. Dharmendra Patel, who is the founder and the most senior migration agent with Aussie's Group. So he's going to share his thoughts about the migration, what he thinks about it, and the tips and tricks that you should apply. And also, he's the man of very high ethics. So let's start with the uh, the discussion. Welcome, Dharmendra Bhai, to the uh, podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Vato. So, uh, Dharmendra Bhai, um, you know, we see a lot of people come in and migrate to Australia. And Australia, we call it a migration country, right? So, uh, what are the key factors someone should consider when they are migrating to Australia, either on a student visa or on a permanent visa? Okay, so. <clears throat> Like no, we've been in a business for many years, and we have done many consultations. In which we have seen many times that when people come to us, because obviously uh, when we are in Australia and when we see the people who already landed in Australia, certain time, their situation, previous situation, you know, uh, say for example, uh, they come here to study, but when they come here to study, and then they realize that like when they came here to study, they realize only to study and then to go back. But then they want to settle here because they like the lifestyle over here, the country is beautiful. And then they realize, uh, um, you know, they made a mistake because certain course uh, doesn't have the, you know, um, immigration pathways, you know. And I believe that like if the students are coming here uh, and if they keep their options alive for the migration, while certainly their first option about their career should be most priority. But at the same time, if there is any possibilities of having the migration pathway option, I think they should consider it, you know, because if they they change their mind by any chance, you know, they don't need to actually repeat the process or they don't need to don't need to go through the harder pathway. The similar like many times we have seen that like people are getting the permanent residency or apply for the work visa from the overseas and they come. And when they come, they actually somewhere they in their mind the things that are okay, we will actually uh, gonna to go to a new country and anyway we're not gonna come back. They actually sell their properties, they they, they usually, you know, uh, wind up everything. And then, uh, you know, they realize that like, uh, because situation can change anytime, you know what I mean? Like uh, maybe weather doesn't suit them, you know, uh, anything happens back home to that um, uh, nearby family members or, you know, elder family members and they, they are forced to go back, you know, uh, situation change. And uh, so I always uh, recommend to anyone who is actually coming to the country, you know, migration pathways or on work visa that to keep their both the options alive. You know, it means that like you cannot actually take everything for granted you should uh, consider the migration as a journey where you are actually coming from the one location and you are actually settling to the other location. So until you don't actually come and give a very good time to yourself, minimum, bad minimum, like two to three years, you know, and then you realize that yes, this country is your, now you can actually call it your home, you know, uh, you shouldn't actually make the decision of your uh, selling everything, selling everything or, so basically, or detaching yourself from your uh, home country or other location. So know? basically don't leave one boat when until you get the another one. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> Similar like that. Yeah. Uh, but many people does that actually, unfortunately, you know, in, and they are very smart people. They are actually getting the permanent sensing based on their skills and experience, but still they does such mistakes where, you know, they take it for granted, realizing that like they will go to another country and they will actually settle well. And sometimes things goes bad, bad and then it becomes like a you know, nightmare for them. So, right. and what do you see as a common mistakes, especially let's say the migrants make when they come to Australia? See, common mistakes like uh, in immigration, I believe that like you know, uh, usually uh, one misconception in uh, our industry is that like you know, when people come to the agent, they think that like because they are paying an agent and agent knows everything, you know what I mean? That visa will be done by the agent only. You know, I believe that like you know, um, agents are the you know kind of a mentor they can actually guide you uh, through the journey they have a good understanding about immigration and uh, they can actually navigate you through with the complex visa and all the ongoing changes you know and can actually you know maximize your opportunity or probability to get the visa see visa doesn't come with a guarantee that's one of the myth you know a lot of agencies they say is like we have a guaranteed visa 
visa doesn't comes to the guarantee every user has a different situation you know and most of the time what people does is like when they actually hand over the case to the agents you they, know, over they usually they usually becomes a carefree and then they don't actually look into that situation i always say that like whatever you been advised the information is always available on the internet you know uh, government has provided a lot of information on the internet which people can always always you know verify you know whatever the agent has advised so while yes the immigration is very complex and you need help, helping hand you know to navigate that particular situation but it is not necessarily that you just you know uh, you ignore your situation and you don't verify that information because in immigration the small mistake and you are into one way entry you know so one basically your your first advice the common mistake that you see is basically don't blind trust someone uh, even if it is us yeah maybe you know if any of our agent gives you an advice probably ask that you know and verify that advice by searching online and uh, as you said yes you're right that if you have a right mentor basically your agent can act as your mentor and, and if you get a right mentor, one yes you go to the final destination your agent doesn't satisfy the criteria understand you are the one who satisfies the criteria your agent only can actually put you in the game because he understands that you can actually qualify how to play you know what i mean yes it's more like a coach let's say yes in any game you need a coach you know they don't play much games but they they tell you the techniques that can help you yeah uh, quickly get on a top on the top yes right and the second thing is like you know rumors which these days you know because of the social media you know uh, you will see lots and lots of information is available in a bytes you know like on insta on the tiktok and the stories obviously he also does the similar uh, you know promotion uh, but what happens like sometimes there is so much of information which conflict with each other you know and there is so much of information which is uh, just comes as you know breaking news like kind of things you know so say for example um, by reading the cover you cannot just the book you understand yes. it's a similarly you know having that small bites or stories or insta or tiktoks you know and because it comes from the many many people you know there is no verification of that information you know i believe yes uh, you you can actually consider that information take it into account but until you don't verify you know you shouldn't be scared you shouldn't actually keep changing your People path panic. you know it's like you know uh, if you'll see that like you go into the ticket line and when you say here's the short line you go there and then become short and short so people who keep changing their lanes you know sometimes it is very impossible for them you know uh, to achieve their goal so i believe that like it's okay you can have lots of information but you have to have the you know uh, uh, practice to verify that information uh, from the you know official sources before you believe it or you just ask some agent or you ask your consultant because you read something so when you learn you learn something you verify it and if you think yes there is some kind of uh, you know it it makes sense or there is some kind of truth then you actually ask your consultant or someone to guide you further right. into that and anyways if you let's say even if your ad agent advise you something and you can't find it on the internet you can always ask them that can you show me where show me the references yes right. show me the references so like say for example in our company you know we have a very strict guidelines you know whatever you actually publish in such a short story obviously because the market becomes like that and we have to participate into that but whatever we do we always do if it is actually available on official source so even though we have an understanding that yes it's coming without having published on the official source we even never said so and that is the principles what we carry forward and that's where like it helped us like oz is as being a trusted brand right yeah this is getting very interesting now so uh, basically in a way you are saying that you know oz is can guarantee that you know whatever we advice we give is pretty much we can show it in writing see uh, obviously oz has so many agents you know what i mean and again i say that like yes every agent has a very good expertise into different different visa categories and and that's how we operate you know people what they say they say based on their experience and understanding as i said there is nothing such as guarantee okay so agent advise you based on his expertise and knowledge yes we have a very extensive training programs and 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 uh, new scrutiny before the agents can actually uh, uh, place the agent to be consulted you know and i mean consultant uh, but i would say that like regardless people come to our company or any other company you know what i mean whatever you have actually learned from social media or from your consultant i would say there is a easy way to verify it you know what i mean it's google is there you actually put your contact you can your, even ask the chat gpt even and chat gpt yeah, even it can but chat gpt is still like not actually putting verified sources it can actually again 
it provide you the information which can use as a guiding principle you know but i would say that like go on google go to the official websites on official websites obviously anyone who's taking the migration path in country you know they are educated people i i i doubt if they don't know how to use the internet or reach out to the you know uh, official uh, links and to verify the information you know so i believe that like i don't know if just be, be, being lazy you don't do it and you are putting your life on you're the just you know giving it to someone and then Some, yeah. you, you and then you blame it. and and then, and then i think many people they they creep and they blame the agents you know and i don't think so that's the right way you know yes, you because should, in the first you, place you also are responsible as you haven't bothered about your own case it's like you know you vote for uh, for for the election and then once they Once the uh, the prime minister is selected, and then you forget about it. No, it it can't go like that. You have to participate in in on a regular basis a regular in the basis, yes, in yes. the uh, have, country. Have, so same thing with it's your own journey, and you have okay. to make sure that you have to participate. Yes. Right now, uh, you know, uh, on behalf of the students, and I think for the student as well. Uh, the next question is, you know, the students come to Australia, and then what they do is just start getting into the workforce. Mm. and they forget that the main primary goal was to study, study. Yeah. but then they focus more on work and then sometimes they go off track and yeah. then come back so basically what i mean is they give more priority to the earning money uh, and you know forget that they, okay my journey is my study then maybe a work permit and then permanent residency now in the in the rush of making that money they actually end up end up with you know spending exactly. earning the same money I and then spending it back it's like see it's a, it's a simple fundamentals you know like when we were children you know many time or parents used to say us um aaj khel le aur kal mazduri kar you know aur ya to aaj pad le short term gain long term yeah. loss so see, and short term loss long term life doesn't gives you like no like what kada na both the world you know so what happens like either when you come here to study and if you and i believe that like I don't. There is nothing wrong, you know, to make money. And uh, but again, the balancing approach is the best way, you know. So balancing approach means, you know, uh, when you came to study and you find an opportunity to make money, yes, you should make money. But you are, you have to understand that, like, you are, if you want to actually, you know, um, first of all, like, if you if you have you have, you have to understand that, like, when you came here, uh, you came here for study, and then you realize that okay, there is a migration trend can be possible, and so you want to also. Uh, aim for it, you know. I mean, and obviously, most of the students who come in Australia, they actually work and they make money while they are studying, and it's a like common fundamental. But many times, students they influence with the money, and then they don't understand that like what was their basic requirement, you know, basic basic need, which is study. And sometimes, many people's student visa cancel, you know, because they don't progress in their study. Sometimes they got like uh, working over hours, you know. And uh, these situations can actually becomes a uh, you know um, you know like a kind of uh, uh, such a deep. Where you know they they forget the family has actually worked so hard you know to get to, them to, to make them educated and then they have invested into their uh, study to, uh, like in, in, in to to send them abroad you know and then it becomes a catastrophic outcome where they, this situation happens and we have seen many times you know people uh, find themselves in limbo. I believe that like when students come here you know and obviously when they have to have study while their visa period is there and. Further down the migration pathway, they want to aim. So understand in a very simple way, any migration pathway requires you having the education. You know, studying in Australia has a point. It means that like studying in Australia already is giving you one of the benefit is a five point. You know, and coming to studying timing, a timely manner. You know, will certainly actually put you in ahead of the race. You know, where your probability will be higher than other students who are actually completing the study after you. You know, if you study, uh, if you complete the study after them, then you are actually delaying your opportunity. You understand? The third thing is this: that like, if you are making, if you if you are studying and and and, and whilst you are studying, you want to make money, then there's another thing is that like, you also have to understand that like, if you whatever you are studying. You are aiming to make a career into that particular industry. So why don't you keep aim, trying for the job? Keep trying the to find a job into that particular field of study. Field of study. You right, know, right, right. sometimes because that was the next question from my. No, but but I'll tell you. I, I have I have learned the mindset of the students. You know, what happens like when they get the job. They they understand this content concept. It's not like they don't have understanding of this concept. Say for example, someone who is studying um, in in a you know um, like. Let's say, for example, civil engineering. Okay, now 
student asked me that like sir but i'm studying civil engineering and i don't think so i can get a job into the civil engineering you know but i say certainly but you can actually start working into the industry which is links with the civil engineering you know what i mean so that's basics. how you actually start making the contacts and network into that particular industry where you will have enough references and network when you complete the study you have the better chances to get the job than any other person you know and student has good understanding about this but the problem happen is that like they are actually working very hard to hunt a first job then then effort that focus that 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 desperation you know what i mean goes uh, fades away, away fades, fades away, away you know uh, since they get the first job and they becomes comfortable and they start making the money they lose their purpose you know they they, they forget the purpose or their objective you know and then what happens like in 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 in, in like that the time pass by they complete the study and then they realize oh i also need an experience how can i find a job how can i connect into this industry but you have actually wasted that two years you know not not putting not, the right not pushing push. yourself to work in a nearby industry so even that like you no know, like if student as i studying in a hospitality or even any other field i always say not not it's not necessary for you to get a job and in an occupation which actually belongs to your study but even though you are actually ex- making yourself exposed to the industry will definitely land you in a job right. which actually work links with your study you know what i mean right. so okay. the summary summary for this is the students for you is simple find the balance between your study and work give equal importance to both number 1 and number 2 in whatever field you are studying in if you can't get a field, job in that direct field at least work in the industry so example let's say for example you want to work as a civil engineer as mr ramendra said then at least start working in let's say even a pa- painting trades worker or maybe you know and labor in australia generally it's not only what you know it's also who you know so network is important so i think and also learn soft skills that would i, I would like to add from yeah. my end soft skills is more like communication and um, how to talk to anyone you know read books that will help you uh, you know there are plenty of books available for on on this kind of topics and nowadays you know you can also watch youtube videos to learn these things now coming back to the next topic mr damendra so what do you see the future you know shall i generally why i'm asking this question is again for on behalf of the students who are now aspiring to be a migrants in australia because they see oh now australia has become strict right and uh, the pr is not easy and etc but if you see the overall uh, location in last 4 5 years is pretty much has been the same is just that the competition has increased right so it's not like the australia is stopping the migration but the mindset nowadays is like is getting tough and then people also started thinking like in, during covid as well if you see a lot of people started thinking about canada that oh they have 400000 um uh, uh intake but now see if they've just dropped down to pretty much very low right so but australia has kept it like very steady yeah so what do you think about the future of migration in australia see, future of migration in australia like see we worked in a, like we worked we are in the industry like you know recently we completed 15 years you know and obviously <clears throat> i've been in a country for 20 years you know uh one thing is for sure yes uh, things are getting co- like complicated and uh, challenging Uh, there is no doubt about it you know uh, but you have to understand also have to understand that like at the same time you know there is a resource to help you you know there is a there is a understanding of, there is a information access you know it is also has improved you know obviously uh, it's not easy uh, to make yourself a position but it's also not impossible you know because still people getting migrate people are still getting permanent residency you know so what how they pe- those people are different than the people who are actually much concerned you understand so say for example like you know people <clears throat> and people complains and sometimes yeah, i i i i have seen in my life that sometimes people are also unfortunate as well see love factor is also matters but it is not only factor you understand like many times people give up very early and then they say ah uh, like we are not able to achieve our migration dream you know but i have seen the people who keep trying sometimes it is a challenging for them but and sometimes it is unfortunate that like they are they are not able to achieve that goal in the uh, like some timeline but because they keep fighting you know i have seen many people even going back and still fighting for the austrian migration journey and they are coming back 
as an impermanent thing. So say for example, as a student, they, they worked hard, they did everything and they couldn't achieve their goal and they had to go back because of their visa expiry or any other reason, you know what I mean? And they still keep working toward their migration journey on through the offshore migration pathway. And I, we have actually did many cases where the people came back. Now, in the migration future, what we have to understand is a trend. There's always a trend, you know what I mean? Like there was days when there was a hospitality, hairdressing, accounting, IT, and I there has been plenty of trends. Yeah, there's a plenty. The trend always has been changed. You know what I mean? And in, when the trend has changed, a lot of people has actually fallen in a trap as well. Just like how you said about Canada, you know. So when people listen that, uh, you know, that okay, this is going to happen. So as I as, as I previously said, nothing comes with a guarantee. You know, everyone has to take their chances. But if you will not take your chances, you are anyway out of the game. You know, but if you take their chances, then give your hundred percent. You know, you have to have like a very good understanding prediction, and you have to have very good network and information on your hands. You know, say for example, at the moment where Austria is heading toward. You know, so obviously uh, Austria has Austria is actually facing a few challenges. You know, in terms of like their metro cities are getting crowded. You know, and their regional cities are not actually getting populated. You know, the infrastructure is a challenge for them. The accommodation is a challenge for them. You know, so obviously the government has the migration program from the very day first. You know, in their benefit, it was never about the people. It was always about the country. You know, the Austrian migration program or Austrian student visa export things. Everything was about their economy, their people, and for the country, you know. So you have to understand that like now if Austria is actually changing their policies and they are actually working or going in some direction, they are going in that direction for a reason, for their benefit. And what is their benefit is like they still had to support their businesses. They still had to support. So obviously the regional area's preference will increase over the period, you know. So I have seen many times people, they only want to choose Melbourne and Sydney. And then they have the reasons of their family members, you know what I mean? They don't want to take their oaths where they want to, they don't want to go to Darwin. They don't want to go to, you know, regional Perfect. Australia, yeah, yes. you know, if you go there, certainly while you will get the benefit of regional study, which will anyway put you five points ahead of most of the people you imagine, you are actually cutting off a lot of competition, you know, the same time, um, people are actually not working or trying to find a job into that industry. If you have as I said, if you expose toward the industry and after the study, if you get an experience, you know, that experience also helps you with the points. Okay. If you are working in the industry and, and, and if you're hardworking, you're intelligent and you, you show the extreme commitment and ethics, you know, it could be possible that like you are benefiting the company and company will actually sponsor you down the lines because they have seen your work and they like you, you know what I mean? There's a lot of ways, you know, but what it needs is a focus, commitment and confidence. You know, if you give up yourself or if you if you want that, like, I just don't uh, you just give up, you know, then you're not going to fight for it. Right. You understand? So the migration trend definitely is getting complicated. But at the same time, there's a lot of information available. So basically, the summary is that there is always a trend. You just have to follow the trend or understand the trend and follow it. And if you have a right migration agent, obviously they will tell you what's the trend going on and where you can easily get. So basically it's like more like a surfing, you know, you wait for a right wave and then get on that wave and you'll, you'll get yes. the speed. And then and, and, and focus, you know, yes. keep, don't keep changing. So if you see the current trend, you. current trend is like government, you know, is getting very, I think, aggressive on 482 and 494. So if you see most of the people now, now that's the trend. Businesses are not going anywhere. Business yes. always need a people. They need really? always skilled people. You know, education builds the skilled people. You know, so there's always a pathway, and that pathway is not going to go anywhere. But mm -hmm. you have to understand now. Trend has changed, so you cannot compare yourself with the previous migrants who has actually just done study and got permanent residency. Now maybe the time needs more, uh, you know, challenge, and you have to just go through it. It's just mm -hmm. an exam, you know. So, uh, Mr. Dharmendra, just last couple of questions. I know you are a very busy man, so. Will not hold you for a long time. Uh, if you do, you remember any client that you think, you know, this is any story that you want to like, you would like to share of a, a journey of a client, yeah. maybe something that's that's close to your heart or or anything like that. Uh, there was one client. Um, there was one client. Like his case was like you know uh, quite complicated. You know so little bit technical. I, I still don't remember, uh, you know, exact uh, context, but 
I'll just tell you. So what happens that those days, uh, I think it, it was the time of 2013 or something, you know, the, the guy came here to study something uh, in a, <clears throat> like a biochemistry or something, you know, which was very odd qualification. Uh, people who aiming for the migration path. He was studying from the, I think, Electro University. And uh, when he actually completed his study, he came to me uh, to launch the 45 visa application, you know. And obviously, based on the study, he could apply 45 visa application as the rule at the time was like you study and you get 45 visa application. And he said like, is there any possibilities I can get permanent residency? And I said like, see, your skill assessment uh, you know, uh, requires bad assessment, which was chem like chemist, so, you know, yes. and uh, it skill assess yeah, it's, it, 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 your skill assessment will go as a uh, bad assess. Now, obviously, if you want to get a skill assessment, you need one year of an experience, you know. So first thing is that like after completing the study, finding the job into that particular field Easy. was very odd, you know. It's like there's no much. Uh, there's uh, not much industry. industry you know? if there's no yeah, industry, so you can't find he, a job. So, so he said, like, but if, what if I'll get a job and will work for a year? Uh, can I get the skill assessment? I said yes. You can get a skill assessment. But then there is another problem. Your occupation is also not into the uh, direct demand list. You know. So even though you will actually uh, complete the points, your invitation will not come. You also at the verge of the state sponsorship, and your occupation is not in any state list at the moment, but. Obviously, the state list keep changing, you know. So, if that occupation will come into the picture, you may will be benefit. But it is a very odd chances where you first get because you have limited time of two years on foreign five visa. During that two years, you actually get one year of an experience and you complete your skill assessment. Also, to come to to manage that points, you know. Um, um, he also required some English score, which was uh, seven by each. At that time, it was a little bit challenging in IELTS. And only IELTS was accepted. IELTS was only accepted here. Yeah. And he said, I will try my best sir, because I'm, I'm, I, I want to uh, get my permanent sense and I'm focused. Uh, and he didn't look back that like what he studied. He was so passionate about his study. And then he figured out the job and then he got the job in Carlton Brewery, you know, in uh, Melbourne um, on a contractual basis, you know for six months, he took that job, he actually worked so well and he extended his job offer for another six months, helping them to understand his situation and with his work ethics and, and, and you know his hard work and he converted his job offer for another one year extension which becomes a one and a half year. After one year, we applied for skill assessment and his skill assessment came positive but and before his visa about to be expired before two months, you know, the Victoria has actually come up with the that occupation, the occupation was where, 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 where the person should have the offer later into the field, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And his and, and his offer was about to expire. He again convinced and extended for another six months of offer and he got that invitation. And then and, and that was like literally a miracle, you know. It was just the belief of someone which like you know, these days a lot of people talk about manifesting, you know, what you think and what you want to be, you know. If you think it's, it happens, it's gonna happen, you know yes. what I mean. I think that was the case of manifestation where you know that guy was so keen and convinced that he will do it and he will achieve it. He was keep doing and the time has started favoring him and, and, and he achieved it. So that's what I say that like, you know, it's not like even today, you know, a lot of people, they already have well informed decision and they are already in the path, you know, they just have to work hard and we have to work hard uh, to make that position amongst the people. But there was no opportunity or no possibilities, but he didn't, he didn't give up. He just keep working toward his goal and the time has actually favored him. And you mentioned that, you know, the luck, sometimes luck plays the part and I think here he was fortunate and the luck but, played But most part. important, you know, he he, he, believed he, he knew that like even though after doing all these things, there is a still There's possibilities. No but he said like anyway, you know, because I studied this and if I will work into the field, you know what I mean? Anyway, it's going to help me for my career. So if I will not get my PR, I will, it will still help me. So why not? I will try because in the both the cases, he, he's going to be winner. You know what I mean? And fortunately, he becomes a winner on both the side. He actually landed into the field. And at the same time, he got power essence as well. So it's, it's like he dared to try and... He and, dared to try, but he was effort. a believer. He right. was a believer, you know. All right. So yes, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Devendra. And is there anything else that you would like to add uh, before we... I only uh, like to add that, like, you know, I, I've seen these days, like, you know, people are actually um, uh, getting very... Because 
who, that's the biggest problem at this stage, like in most of the clients, like they're not focused. They, they don't actually believe what they do. They keep changing the things, you know. Yes. Um, they they comes into the, they, they, they easily falls into the rumors, you know. They don't make an effort to understand the right resources, to understand the information, you know. Uh, when they go to the agents, they just rely on the agents and they just leave it, leave it up to them, you know. I believe that like, I think that should be the conscious mindset, you know, in a migration. Migration is not easy. Thing, you know you migrants are warrior you know they leave their comfort they leave their homes you know their family has actually put a big bat on them you know I believe that like you you are chosen you know for this war uh, of migration you can say you know uh, I believe that like your that lazy attitude or or ignorance you know what I mean it's going to cost a lot not just to you but your family and your dreams as well you know I believe that like Regardless, you know, you have the chances, you don't have the chances. Whatever you do, you have to do it with a complete conviction. You have to be a big believer. You cannot actually, you know, leave the odds into someone else, uh, you know, uh, mercy, you know. you. So I believe that like, just be focused, just be little intelligent, just be little conscious, you know. You don't have to be extra smart, just be cautious. Cautious, you know? yes. And, and do it in the right way. Right. All right. So thank you very much for the insightful information. And, thank uh, you, Weber. Migrants, as you see, you know, that uh, the final word is from, from Mr. Dharmendra is that if you want to get to your destination and make, make your journey smooth, I think the best idea that he has shared is that uh, find a balance between your study and work. Also, uh, if you can't find a job in your industry, Sorry, you can't find a job in your field. Find it in your industry. At the same time, uh, believe in what you're doing. So, and don't keep changing. Don't leave everything to your agent, obviously. Uh, participate equally in, in, in the uh, discussion with your agent. And last but not the least is, uh, you know, you have come to Australia, left your comfort zone. So you are already, a, a, you know, it proves that you're already uh, someone who's a risk taker. So take more risk and uh, don't lose this opportunity and try very hard and work harder towards your goals. And definitely the manifestation that he spoke about does help and you'll definitely get your uh, desired result, which is settling in Australia and achieving your Australian dream. Thank you very much for joining. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you. If you like this content, Please share it with your friends and also don't forget to follow us on our social media channels for more insightful videos like this.